To install MySQL Server on Windows 10, begin by downloading the installer package. You can search for a MySQL download and then go to the MySQL community downloads. The community server can be run without an enterprise license for use at home. Once you reach the download page for Windows, make sure the platform is Microsoft Windows, and then download the Windows installer. The Windows installer itself is a 32-bit program, but contains the installation packages for both the 32-bit and 64-bit version of MySQL Server. So even though you may have a 64-bit system, go ahead and download the MySQL installer, even though it says it's 32-bit. When you get to the download page, you notice that there's two packages available, one that's smaller in size and one that's larger. The smaller package is more efficient if you're only going to be installing some parts of the MySQL suite of products, but it will reach out to the internet to download some files during the installation process. You can also alternatively download the much larger installer that has all of the products in the installation file. If you think your internet connection is going to be unreliable or if you're relatively sure you're going to install most of the features of the suite, it may be better to download the larger package. When you click the download button, you'll be taken to a page to log in, but if you do not need to log in or don't need an account, there is a link at the bottom to bypass this. Once you get here, save the file and download it to a directory where you can find the installation file. In your downloads directory, you'll find the MSI file. Go ahead and run this installer program. There's some different profiles you can choose that'll install some of the products based on the profile you pick. You can pick the developer default if you like. You may want to use the custom depending on which of the products you want to install. This is Windows 10 64-bit, so under MySQL Server Tree, I'm going to choose 64-bit version of MySQL Server. Under Applications, I'm going to install the 64-bit version of MySQL Workbench which is the tool you use to interact with the database, configure it, create tables, and so forth. You also may want the MySQL Notifier, which is a program that will run in your tray icon and tell you the status of the MySQL server. It also lets you start and stop it. And then if you're going to be connecting to Eclipse for JSP, you're going to want the Connector J. If you're using other IDEs like Visual Studio or other languages like Python, you may want to grab those connectors as well. The connectors are the drivers that allow those languages to talk to the database. If you want, you can download the MySQL documentation or you can use the MySQL documentation that's available on the MySQL website. For each product, highlight it and then click the arrow to add it to the list of items to be installed. Then click Next, double check the list, and install the products. You can always run the installer program again later to add or remove features. Usually it's better to install the minimal amount needed, especially if you're running on a virtual machine where disk space may be a bit of a problem when you're trying to start and stop the virtual machines. The larger the virtual disks get, the longer it takes the virtual machines to load in your VMware or VirtualBox. A couple of the tools that you install may take a long time to install depending on the speed of your hard drive, so this process may take a while. Progress is displayed in the progress column for each of the products respectively. You can also click on show details 
to watch what the installer is doing. Once the installation is complete, click Next, and then you can configure your server. If you just want to use the default options, those ports will work well. Then you want to set a root password for the server. This will be the password for the root user. You can also add users give those users a password, and MySQL will create those users on the database with that role as well. You may see a Windows firewall box asking for permission to pop up during this process. Once you get the server installed, you should see a MySQL service installed in Windows, set to automatically start when the computer starts, and it should already be started for you. You can change whether or not MySQL starts when Windows starts by changing the settings in the server properties.